Mike Ashew here with the DMV. Has concluded. The DMV team.com play. Sean Parker along with Nick Allison. I always wanted to play volleyball. Cordova trying to pick it out of the board. And they score! Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Prep Zone at DMVStream.com. I'm your host, Jackie Sagar, and joining me today is John Roteman from the Connection Newspapers and Mark Giannato from the Washington Post. Welcome, guys. How's it going? Thanks for having us. All right, we got a lot of great stuff to talk about today. First, we are going to recap four of the top games in the area. We have H.D. Woodson versus Theodore Roosevelt. That was a very close game. We are going to go over three more games that happened this week. And then we will be previewing the WCAC basketball tournament as well as the Virginia Conference 7 tournament. And then we are going to watch as our Darcy Thought Tharp talks with Dylan Mullen about the playoff hockey. Where to watch? As always, you can watch dmvstream.com on demand as well as public access channel 10 three times a week. And you can watch on Red Apple 21 Monday through Sunday. All right. We are going to get into the weekend rewind. But first, we're going to take a break and look at the upcoming dmvstream.com Nova Challenge at Marshall High School, April 10th. Take a look. It's the DMVStream.com Nova Challenge, the third annual installment of Northern Virginia's premier all-star basketball showcase event is expanding. This year's April 10th event will welcome the top seniors from Fairfax, Loudoun, Arlington, Prince William, and the city of Alexandria for an action-packed day. In addition to the two all-star games, the area's best public school basketball players will compete in a dunk contest and a three-point contest. Underclassmen will also have access to a developmental clinic hosted by our friends at Evolution Basketball. Now, not only has this year's event grown from one game to two, but by becoming the title sponsor of this event, DMVStream.com will be providing you, the viewers and fans, the exceptional state-of-the-art coverage you've come to expect from us. As the Mid-Atlantic's number one source for live sports broadcasting, well, DMVStream.com, we're going to broadcast this year's event live to computers, tablets, mobile devices, and we'll also make the replays available on demand on the internet as well as our relationships with local cable television access channels. DMVStream.com produces live broadcasts for professional, semi-pro, and amateur sporting events as well as colleges, universities, high schools, AAU, and youth tournament organizations throughout the Mid-Atlantic. With a client list that includes ESPN, The Washington Post, Monumental Sports Network, CBSSports.com, USAFootball.com, USLacrosse.org, NCAA.com, the National Federation of High School Sports, Georgetown University, among others, Synthesis Multimedia Productions and DMVStream.com has emerged as the Mid-Atlantic's top provider of multimedia. Now, the DMVStream.com Nova Challenge, featuring Nova's premier basketball players on April 10th. You can find out more about that at DMVStream.com and NovaChallenge.com. We'll see you there. And we are back in the prep zone. We're going to get started in our weekend rewind. The first game we'll be recapping tonight is H.D. Woodson and Theodore Roosevelt. This was an intense game, wasn't it, Mark? Yeah, Jackie, this one had it all. I mean, it was a game for the DCIAA regular season title between the two best teams in the league, H.D. Woodson and Theodore Roosevelt. Um, you had some controversial officiating, some lackluster shot clock operation, and one whale of a game in the second half. There were 14 lead changes over the final 11 minutes, uh, and it was ultimately decided by two free throws by Keon Boyd uh, with a couple seconds left in, the, in regulation. And Woodson uh, got, gets the 78-77 win and completes a perfect regular season, 27-0. And, and uh, they're now entering the playoffs on a quest to become the first D.C. City team, City Public School team to go undefeated in more than 30 years. Uh, the last time it happened was 1985, Sping Arm with Sherman Douglas, who went on to play in the NBA. Um, but this was a game, this was just a, 
this was just a really, really good game. And you can see Keon Boyd here, he had 28 points, hit a tough, tough couple really tough jumpers. I think he's a kid, he's only a sophomore, and he's about six foot four, six foot five. And I think you're gonna eventually see him uh, one day play in college, play at the high major level. Um, you can see there he's had a great season. He transferred to H.D. Woodson from Dunbar this offseason. Uh, and then Antoine Walker, the reigning DCI AA Player of the Year, he had 20 points and, and really changed the course of the game early in the fourth quarter uh, with a couple big blocks and, and six points before fouling out uh, late in the fourth quarter, which just goes to show how impressive H.D. Woodson was in this one because uh, they did it without their best player down the stretch. Um, it'll be inter interesting to see this week, now that the DCIAA playoffs are here, um, whether these teams get together in the DCIAA championship game again. Um, I, I, it would be a great game if they get, you know, that game the other night could have gone either way. And so I'm secretly hoping they meet each other and there's no upsets in the DCIAA tournament because I'd, I'd pay good money to see them play again. All right, again, that's H.D. Woodson with the 78-77 win. <clears throat> We are going to move over to Westfield with the 10-point win over Oakton. John, what do you got? Well, Jackie, this was basically just a, a dominant Westfield team um, wrapping up a, a dominant regular season. Uh, once Tyler Scanlon and some of their other guys came back from football, they haven't lost yet. Uh, they closed the regular season on a 17-game win streak uh, with a 68-58 win over Oakton. And they're just looking to, to make another deep postseason run. This was just kind of a, a formality. They uh, went undefeated in Conference 5 play. Tyler Scanlon ends the regular season in style. Big 33-point night. Blake Francis adds 19. And uh, they enter the Conference 5 tournament as the number one seed, get the automatic bye, and they host Herndon in the semifinals. Uh, this is a Westfield team that <clears throat> uh, went to the state championship game last year and seemed like they had one in their grasp, just couldn't hit a couple of clutch free throws down the stretch. So uh, there's really no reason to think that they won't be back in the mix again for another deep postseason run. So as you can see here, Tyler Scanlon has a big night, 33 points, 10 for 13 at the line. And this was just kind of them putting the bow on the dominant regular season and moving on into the postseason. Tyler Scanlon is quite the athlete. So where do you see these two teams going from here? Well, Oakton is done now. They lost to uh, Herndon in the opening round. So Herndon gets their crack at Westfield. Um, I don't see anyone stopping Westfield, in the, at least in the conference tournament, and probably not into the, the region tournament as well. Uh, I don't see any reason why they don't end up back in the state tournament with the dominant duo of uh, um, Blake Francis and Tyler Scanlon leading the way. All right, well, we are going to get back into our weekend rewind, but first, we are going to look at the DMVStream.com's partnership with the newly formed LAC Sports Network, a 24-hour sports network dedicated to the sport of lacrosse. Take a look. What's up, lacrosse fans? I'm excited to announce our new partnership with LACSportsNetwork.com, a 24-hour digital media network dedicated to covering the game of lacrosse, delivering thousands of hours of original programming, including live professional, collegiate, and amateur games. Now, those of you that already know about Synthesis Multimedia Productions and our platform at DMVStream.com, you know that our group has become the Mid-Atlantic's dominant force in providing live streaming of pro, college, and local high school sports. Now, in this new partnership with LACSportsNetwork.com, we'll be bringing you, the viewers, unprecedented live coverage of the Mid-Atlantic's most notable high school lacrosse programs, with matchups that include teams like Gonzaga, Georgetown Prep, Landon, Loyola Blakefield, McDonough, Boys Latin, Hill Academy, St. Paul School, Culver, New Canaan, St. Stephen's St. Agnes, Collegiate School, and the Washington Catholic Athletic Conference Championship live from the University of Maryland. Now, in this series of 10 games, starting in early March, you can watch the best matchups live in HD with the state-of-the-art broadcast technology you've come to expect from us at Synthesis Multimedia Productions and DMVStream.com. Broadcasts will include a minimum of five HD camera angles, graphics, instant replay, live clock, live scoring, up to the minute stats, and a 15-person crew, including directors, producers, camera operators, play-by-play -play color, and sideline reporters, all dedicated to creating a television-style broadcast experience that you can watch live right in the palm of your hand. To find out more about this project, go to LACSportsNetwork.com and start watching lacrosse right now.
everybody, Darcy Tharp here to unveil the DMVStream.com Athlete of the Week, which comes to us from the hardwood as Gonzaga's Chris Likes scored a season-high 38 points along with 6 rebounds and 4 assists to help the Eagles beat O'Connell 67-63. If you want to be the DMVStream.com Athlete of the Week, be sure to tweet us your nomination at DMVStream. And we're back, and we're going to jump right back into the weekly rewind with our third game report, which is Largo with a buzzer beater win over Gwynn Park. Mark? Yeah, this was a, another really, really exciting game. Largo hands Gwynn Park their first loss of the year on a uh, buzzer beating three pointer by Christian Caldwell in overtime. Um, and. Uh, it was notable that the celebration was almost as good as the shot. Uh, they run into the hallway, pile up on each other. It was a huge win for Largo, who has uh, you know, really come on strong here of late. Um, they added Greg Boyd via transfer uh, uh, right at the beginning of the season. Boyd played three games for Riverdale Baptist and then transferred to Largo. And you can see now the chemistry has really come together. Uh, and, and no better example than going into Gwynn Park and beating Gwynn Park. Um, but what, what's interesting is the very next night they actually dropped a game to Friendly, which just goes to show just how tough this league is, the Prince George's 3A, 2A, 1A league is this year. You've got Gwynn Park rolling, Douglas rolling, Largo's capable of beating anyone, Central's having a very good year, Oxon Hill's having a very good year. I really think it's probably the best public school uh, conference in the area this year. Um, and then you just saw the celebration. I mean, it, you can't go wrong with a great high school celebration. You can see the pile up here and Christian Caldwell with 13 points, none bigger than that game winning three. Uh, he's, he's known for uh, some late game heroics. He also had a uh, last minute punt return touchdown during football season to win a game for Largo in the fall. So uh, really encouraging for Largo and, and I think they're gonna be a threat uh, once, we get to, once we get to the playoffs because that 2A South region, I mean, there's really five or six teams that could emerge from there, even though Gwim Park and Douglas seem to be the two best. But it's, just, it's really tightly packed, and there's a lot of really good teams uh, that are going to battle it out. You're going to you're gonna have to win three or four really tough games to get to, the, to get to the state semifinals this year out of that district. All right, again, that's Largo 72, Gwim Park 70. We're going to go into our last game recap. It is West Potomac 59, South County 45. John? Yeah, Jackie, this was a game that got moved up uh, due to the potential inclement weather last Friday. So they, they go from a 7.30 tip-off up to a 4.45 tip-off. and It was at South County High School, so West Potomac had about 35 minutes by the time they got off the bus to tip off. So, you know, they didn't really leave a whole lot of time to warm up or whatnot, but they didn't let it get them down. They handled it great jumped out to a 17-4 lead against South County, uh, took a 35-13 lead at the half, and really looked like a team that could make some noise coming up in the Conference 7 tournament. It was their ninth win in their last 10 games, and the front court trio of Jamie Sarah, Dijon Belfield, and Dewan Belfield, they're not the tallest guys in the world, about 6'3", 6'4", but <clears throat> they're very athletic, they box out well, and they controlled the boards and it was a really dominant performance. South County got it back to about single digits in the second half, but they never really threatened and West Potomac took care of business. As you can see here, Jamie Sarah had a double-double, 13 points, 12 rebounds. Uh, <clears throat> he's listed at 6'4". He's going to go to William and & Mary and play baseball, but uh, he plays bigger than 6'4". He's a tremendous rebounder, uh, crashes the glass um, aggressively, and uh, yeah, West Potomac pulls out the 59-45 win. All right, so what's coming up for these two teams? Well, West Potomac has a chance to go in as the number two seed in the conference tournament. They have to win tonight against Annandale. Uh, if they don't win tonight, they go in as the number three seed, but they look like a team that's playing their best ball at the right time of the season heading into the postseason. South County is going to go in as the number seven seed and play either West Potomac or T.C. Williams, this, depending on tonight's outcome. All right. That is West Potomac with the win over South County. We are going to get into our allmetsports.com weekly fast forward. But first, our own Darcy Tharp had a chance to catch up with the Washington Post Dylan Mullen to discuss upcoming playoff hockey. Take a look.
Welcome to the special edition of The Prep Zone. I'm Darcy Tharp and I'm joined today by Dylan Mullen from the Washington Post who covers high school sports. Dylan, how are you today? I'm good, Darcy. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We're glad to have you as well. And Dylan is here to discuss upcoming playoff hockey action. Who should we start with, Dylan? Well, there's been a lot of good action on the ice this winter, but we're going to start in Loudoun County, Ashburn to be specific, where the Stonebridge Bulldogs have absolutely rolled through the Northern Virginia Scholastic Hockey League this winter, led by senior winger Cade Groton and junior Ryan Leibold. The Bulldogs outscored opponents 95-4 to on their way to a 10-0 regular season. Groden is a real powerhouse forward, has, abil has the ability to pick the puck up in his own zone, power all the way through, get a shot on net. Leibold is a little bit more unassuming of a player. He plays center, has great ice vision, always sort of winds up in the right place. Um, Groton is still trying to figure out his college hockey future, while Leibold has already signed to play juniors with the uh, Spring Junior Springfield Blues in Illinois, where he'll play for a couple years and hope to attract the attention of some college scouts. Um, at Stonebridge, head coach John Lynch has been there for 15 years since the program started. He's adamant that this is the best team he's ever had. They have five players who've scored at least 20 points in those 10 regular season wins. Um, and I think we all have to expect that they'll, they'll roll through the uh, Northern Virginia Scholastic Hockey League playoffs for a second straight uh, championship there. Sounds great, Dylan. Look forward to seeing what, they, what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, Darcy Tharp here to unveil the DanvyStream.com Play of the Week, which comes to us from Brandywine, Maryland. With Largo and Gwen Park facing off in overtime, Largo's Greg Boyd drives into the heart of the defense and kicks out to Christian Caldwell, who drains the game-winning three as the buzzer sounds to give the Lions the 72-70 win and handing the Yellow Jackets their first loss. If you want to see your play as Play of the Week on this show, be sure to tweet us at DMVStream. All right, welcome back to the Prep Zone. Jackie Sagar here with John Ropeman and Mark Giannato. We are going to get into our AllMetsSports.com weekly fast forward. Our first preview is the WCAC tournament. Mark? Yeah, Jackie, this is the, the main event in this area. Uh, not just, you know, some of the area's best teams, but, you know, a couple of the nation's best teams uh, in St. John's and DeMatha. Um, always a, a really fun tournament that could go either way. Two of the past three years, the number one seed has lost in the quarterfinals. Uh, we'll find out. We're not sure yet who that number one seed is. It depends on tonight's results uh, between St. John's and McNamara. If they win, St. John's is the one seed. If they lose, DeMatha would get the one seed. But no matter what, we're going to get some really compelling quarterfinal matchups this Friday. Gonzaga will host Paul the Six in a matchup uh, of two teams with uh, a host of Division I recruits, uh, including McDonald's All-American VJ King at Paul the Six and point guard Chris Likes, who might be the most electrifying player in the area. Uh, you're seeing him here for Gonzaga. And then also on Friday, you got O'Connell versus McNamara, another game that could go either way. O'Connell has played really well of late, uh, knocking off Gonzaga and Paul the Six recently. Uh, Nate Watson, their big man, uh, from Capital, he transferred in there from Capital Christian this year. He's played really, really well here down the stretch. Um, but you know, this this tournament always carries ramifications not only for the Washington Post rankings, but also for the USA Today rankings, for the Max Preps rankings, all the national rankings. Um, and this, you're seeing Markel Fultz here. You know, Dematha hasn't won a WCAC tournament title in a few years here, uh, and it feels like maybe this is the year for. Markel Fultz to really put his stamp on his legacy at DeMatha. You know, he's already a McDonald's All-American. He's already become a great story rising up from being a JV player as a sophomore to now, you know, one of the best players in the country going to University of Washington next year. Um, so I'm interest, interested to see, you know, how he does. But, you know, there's any number of really talented players. You know, we didn't even mention Anthony Cowan, who's having one of the best years in the area. Uh, at St. John's, he's headed to Maryland. And then you got Jameer Moultrie at McNamara, a guy capable of putting up 30 points at any point in time. 
Um, so you really never know what's going to happen in this tournament, and the atmospheres are always just top-notch. The semifinals are going to be at American, and so will the finals. Last year, Gonzaga and DeMatha played an overtime thriller that went down to the wire. So I, it's going to be—it's hard for me to really pick one team because you know any of these—you know any of the top six could really on any given night beat each other. But to me, it's going to—you know—the two best teams throughout this entire season have been DeMatha and St. John's, the most consistent. So I'd like to think it's going to come down to them two, and they split during the regular season. I just think, you know, Markel Fultz, is, he's probably the most talented player in the area, and he's really the one guy who, I, when I watch him, I go, you know, if this guy doesn't get injured, there's a good chance we're going to see him in the NBA one day. Um, so I'm going with DeMatha. I, they haven't won it in a few years, and given their history, they're probably due to win another one here. Um, and it would be really fitting for Markel, considering the past two years he's just played so well. Uh, it would be really fitting if he could end his career with a championship. But you could say the same thing about Anthony Cowan at St. John's. So I, I'd suggest if, if you're going to pick one tournament to go to here at the end of the year, go to the WCAC tournament. It's going to be really, really good with a lot of guys who you're going to see in the, in the college ranks in the coming years. Yeah, it'll be very competitive. Um, we are going to get into our second preview, which is the Conference 7 tournament. But first, our Darcy Tharp had a chance to catch up with Daniel Cusin to discuss Oxen Hill star Sean Moss. Take a look. Welcome to a special edition of The Prep Zone. I'm Darcy Tharp, and I'm joined by the sports editor from Prince George's Sentinel, Daniel Cusin. How are you doing, Darcy? Doing great, Daniel. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. So, Daniel is here to discuss senior guard from Oxen Hill, the one and only Sean Moss. Yes, definitely. Um, Sean Moss, he's, uh, you know, kind of the a secret in PG County. Um, this guy pretty much puts up points every night. There's only two nights that he actually didn't score double figures. Um, he's 5'11", uh, plays combo guard. Um, and he's 153 pounds, but uh, that's probably when he's soaking wet. Um, he's <laughs> definitely a smaller st stature guy, but um, like I said, he's putting up 24.9 points per game, and he recently broke, um, not broke, but actually surpassed a record of 1,000 points for Oxen Hill against the Central Falcons, and that was on February 5th. Um, and when he did that, he actually um, is second to Mike Sweetney of the New York Knicks. He was drafted in 2003, and he was also the 1998 All-Met Player of the Year. Um, and like I'm saying, he's having a breakout senior year, um, and he started off really quick his first game of the year. He scored 35 points, which was a season high for him, and that was against his uh, crosstown rival, Sarasville High School. Um, and in that game, was six three-pointers that he nailed, and I think he's uh, around 43 points uh, he's knocked down this year. And uh, another thing, interesting stat, uh, Paul the VI uh, star uh, forward V.J. King is averaging around 22 points per game, and he clearly surpasses that number, and he just selected uh, Louisville as a school to go to. He's ranked 26 in the ESPN Top 100. Um, at his position, Markel Foltz is in the uh, Top 100 as well, ranked 10th. So that kind of gives you some perspective of, you know, how he's not really garnering as much attention and the numbers that he's putting up all year. Wow. Well, Daniel, what, how did he score the thousandth point? Tell us a little bit about the game that happened. Right. I'm glad you asked that. Mm -hmm. um, he actually scored 22 points during that game, and it was exactly the amount that he needed to be second all time in Oxen Hill's history. And um, he's uh, leading them to an 8 and 2 start. Um, they're definitely not a contender in their division, but he's definitely carrying the weight. Um, like I said, he hasn't received any offers for some reason, and it might be due to his size. But and we are back in the prep zone. We're going to jump right back into our weekly fast forward. Our second and last preview is going to be the Virginia Conference 7 tournament. John? Yes, Jackie. Conference 7 uh, has been arguably the deepest conference in the 6A North region this year in terms of top to bottom quality. Uh, West Springfield going to be the number one seed. They really ran the conference for most of the year. They won their first 11 games, but they kind of hit a tough patch here at the end. They, uh, they lose to West Potomac. 
they lose to Lake Braddock and they fall behind by more than 20 points against South County before battling back and getting the win. So uh, at one point in the season, they seemed unbeatable, but now uh, while they're still the number one seed, West, Patel, or West Springfield has kind of shown that they are susceptible to getting beat, so that's no guarantee. But with 6'9", uh, Lewis Jonkum and 6'4", Brock Vaughn there in the middle, um, they kind of prevent or present opponents with a pick and poison. Those guys, you try to play man defense, double them in the post. Uh, they got guys, Riley Welch on the outside who can knock down threes. You try to play zone, you leave open the perimeter. So West Springfield is uh, going to be a good contender for this tournament. They play Annandale in the first round. The two and three seeds are still up in the air, depending on what happens with West Potomac and Annandale tonight. But uh, if things go to plan, West Potomac will likely get the number two seed and uh, host South County, the number seven seed, who West Potomac just took care of South County a few days ago and beat them twice during the regular season. West Potomac is a team playing great ball right now. They've won nine of their last 11. Uh, two wins over South County during the regular season, and that looks like a matchup that West Potomac should win. But history says that South County's got a shot. Last year, they entered the tournament as the number seven seed. And last year, there were only seven teams in the conference, and they end up beating the top three seeds, boom, 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 and win the the conference championship, so you can't count them out. Uh, T.C. Williams likely goes in as the number three seed. They would be matched up with W.T. Woodson. T.C. Williams won both those games this year. Uh, T.C. Williams has fantastic guard play. Tavares James, Fami Mamo, Jordan Jones. Uh, they cause problems for any opponent, and they swept West Potomac to number two seed, so there's no telling how far they could go. Um, the 4-5 matchup is an interesting one. Lake Braddock will host Mount Vernon. Those two teams split their two matchups this season. This is uh, Mount Vernon's first year in Conference 7. Uh, Lake Braddock obviously led by James Butler, uh, six foot eight post, averaging 26 points a game. Uh, that's a difficult matchup for anyone. But um, at this point, even though West Springfield has uh, the best record, they've been kind of stumbling at this point. And I could see some teams, West Potomac or TC Williams, sneaking up and making some noise in that tournament. And if I had to go with one, I'd probably say West Potomac at this point. This is West Potomac's best team in quite some time. Yeah, they won the they won the Patriot District Championship in 2010, and uh, last year they struggled. But uh, head coach David Houston the third he he really said that he played a lot of these kids last year and they struggled. But he kind of knew that with a lot of those kids coming back this year, they'd have a shot with the experience and guys like Khalil Williams Diggins averaging 17 points a game. Uh, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the tournament. All right, well, that's going to do it for us at the Prep Zone. I'm Jackie Sagar, and I want to give a special thank you to John Rotman and Mark Giannato. Thank you for being here. Also, I want to thank Darcy Tharp for her interviews. Make sure you tune in to dmvstream.com, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.